Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel Journey with Vijay Kumar Srivastava. Today I am going to present the topic intercropping. Before presentation I would like to introduce myself. I am Vijay Kumar Srivastava. I have done MS Agriculture with specialization in agronomy from GB Panth University of Agriculture and Technology, Panthanagar in 1986. So let's move to the presentation intercropping. Intercropping refers to simultaneous production of two or more dissimilar crops in a definite row ratio pattern or row arrangement on the same piece of land at the same time. The base crop necessarily in distinct row arrangement and its recommended optimum plant population is suitably combined with the additional plant density of the associated crop. It has better utilization of growth resources than soil cropping. Generally legumes and non-legumes are grown in intercropping. Now to study objectives of intercropping systems. First objective is intensification of cropping both in time and space dimensions by growing two or more crops. Second, increase total productivity per unit land area by increasing the pressure of plant population. And third, insurance against main crop failure under aberrant weather conditions or pest epidemics. And fourth, judicious utilization of resources such as land, labor and inputs. Now turn to understand principles of intercropping. First one, when two crops to be grown together, they are chosen in such a way that there is variation in their growth duration. The peak periods of growth of the two crops species should not coincide. Second, the associating crop should be complementary to the main crop. Third, the subsidiary crop should be of shorter duration and of faster growing habits to utilize early slow growing periods of main crop. Fourth, the component crop should require similar agronomic practices. And fifth, erect growing crops should be intercropped with cover crops. And sixth, erosion permitting crop should be intercropped with erosion resisting crop. And seventh, the component crop should have different rooting pattern and depth of rooting. Eighth, the time of peak nutrient demands of component crop should not overlap. And ninth, there should be no competition for light, space, sunshine and air and it should be minimum among the component crops. And tenth, compatibility for pest and disease. So these are the principles where we are choosing for intercropping. In intercrop, there are two crops. First one is base crop and component crop. Base crop is the one which is planted as its optimum soil crop population in an intercropping situation and second crop is planted in between rows of base crop for obtaining bonus yield from intercrop without affecting base crop yield. And what are the component crop? Component crop is used to refer to either individual crops making up the intercropping situation. Intercrop yield is the yield of a component crop when grown in intercropping and expressed over the total intercropped area. A simple addition of both the intercrop yields a combined intercrop yield. Component crop means intercrop is a multiple cropping practice involving growing of two or more crops in proximity. The most common goal of intercropping is to produce a greater yield on a given piece of land by making use of resources or ecological processes that would otherwise not utilized by a single crop. So in case of intercropping, we are growing different crops, they are having the different habits and we are getting the additional yields. Here we have given the some examples of intercropping where the selection of principal crop and intercrop is demonstrated here. In case of intercrop where the sugar cane is main crop, principal crop, it can be intercropped with wheat, cowpea, soybean, moong and sunflower. And where the sunflower is grown as a principal crop, we can take cowpea, soybean, moong, ulad, arhar as a intercrop. And where maize is principal crop, it can be intercropped with cowpea, soybean, ulad, arhar and castor. And in case of bajra, it can be combined with cowpea, soybean, ulad, arhar and castor. And in case of cotton, it can be intercropped with soybean and groundnut and potato is cultivated with wheat and radish as a intercropping. 
Now we will study about advantages of intercropping. Intercropping gives additional yield and income per unit area compared to soil cropping and it acts as insurance against failure of principal crops in abnormal year if the principal crop is damaged due to unfavorable conditions like drought, flood, epidemics, etc. The companion crop may give sustenance income. Legume crops as companion crops always benefit the principal crop through nitrogen fixation and also utilizes soil moisture from deeper soil layers. Intercrops maintain the soil fertility as the nutrient uptake is made from both layers of soil and there will be reduction in soil runoff and erosion losses. Intercropping system utilizes resources efficiently as nutrient, water, light and space and their productivity is increased. Intercropping with cash crop is highly profitable and it helps to avoid intercrop competition and thus a higher number of crop plants are grown per unit area. Intercrop offers more employment and better utilization of laborers, machine and power throughout the year. And quick growing companion crops always suppress the harmful weeds thriving in the interfaces of the principal crops. And there will be less incidence of insect pest and attack in case of intercropping by growing different kinds of crops. In intercropping, in addition to advantages, there are some disadvantages also. Like yield decreases as the crops differ in their competitive abilities. If we are going to select the crops which are having the intercompetition, in such cases they will suppress each other and there will be decrease in yield. Second, management of intercrops having different cultural practices seems to be a difficult task. And improved implements cannot be used efficiently because the space is occupied by different crops. Higher amount of fertilizer or irrigation water cannot be utilized properly is the component crop vary in their response of these resources because of growing different nature of crops. There will be difficulty in harvesting because of different seeding time of crops and there are certain combinations in intercropping which suppress the growth of another crop and may be conductive to insect pest and diseases. So in case of intercropping there should be care taken while selection of crops. Now turn to study the types of intercropping. First one is mixed intercropping. Growing two or more crops simultaneously with no distinct row arrangement is called mixed intercropping. This is also referred as mixed cropping. The example like sorghum, palmillet and cowpea are mixed and broadcasted to rain fed conditions. Second is row intercropping. Growing two or more crops simultaneously where one or more crops are planted is rows. Often simply referred to as intercropping and the examples like maize plus green gram in ratio of 1 by 1 or maize grown with black gram with 1 by 1 ratio and groundnut plus red gram having the ratio of 6 by 1. Now to discuss in broad about row intercropping. Based on the percent of plant population used for each crop in intercropping system is divided into two series, first is additive and second is replacement series. In additive series, which is mostly adopted in India, one crop is sown with 100% of its recommended population in pure stand, which is known as the base crops. Another crop known as intercrop is introduced into the base crop by adjusting or changing geometry. The population of intercrop is less than its recommended population in pure stand and land equivalent ratio of additive series is greater than replacement series. Additive series is more efficient than replacement series in intercropping system. And second is replacement series. In replacement series, both the crops are called component crops. By sacrificing certain population of one component, another component is introduced. Like example, sorghum plus cowpea, where the sorghum ratio is 2 and cowpea ratio is 1. This type of intercropping is practiced in western countries. Third type of intercropping is strip intercropping. 
growing two or more crops simultaneously in strips wide enough to permit independent cultivation but narrow enough for the crops to interact agronomically like example groundnut plus red gram having the ratio of 6 by 4 in a strip and fourth type of intercropping is relay intercropping growing two or more crops simultaneously during the part of the life cycle of each a second crop is planted after the first crop has reached its reproductive stage of growth before it is ready for harvest often simply referred to as relay cropping now we will study in details about relay intercropping it is interplanting or intersowing of the succeeding crop in the proceeding annual crop succeeding crop is sown after the proceeding crop has reached the maturity stage but before the harvest of ascending crop or it refers to planting of succeeding crop before the harvest of preceding crop the planting of succeeding crop may be done before or after flowering before or after the attainment of reproductive stage completion of active life cycle senescence of leaves or attainment of physiological maturity of the crop the common examples of relay cropping are maize potato maize toria maize turnip and ragi horse gram the relay cropping is primarily done with the objectives first to gain time for multiple cropping second to plant the subsequent crop at their optimum planting date when the current crop harvest is delayed and third to avoid moisture stress in the post rainy season and fourth to avoid labor peaks at the harvest of the first crop and planting of the second crop relay cropping is difficult in the closely spaced and dense canopy cereals as sorghum or millet unless some rows are skipped now we'll study the difference between different types of cropping like first intercropping versus mixed cropping intercropping is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same piece of land with a definite row arrangement like example growing groundnut and red gram in 6 by 1 ratio and mixed cropping mixed cropping is the growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same piece of land in a proportion without any row arrangement like growing fodder sorghum plus fodder cowpea or pilispicera now second is soil crop versus row intercropping soil cropping is the cultivation of one crop variety grown alone in pure stand at normal density it is also called solid planting like example growing of sorghum crop by the space of 45 row by row and 15 centimeter plant to plant or growing groundnut by row by row spacing 30 centimeters and plant to plant 10 centimeter spacing in case of row intercropping growing two or more crops in the same piece of land simultaneously with definite proportion of rows like growing sorghum plus cowpea in the ratio of 2 by 1 or 3 by 1 or growing sugarcane or soybean at the ratio of 1 by 2 or 1 by 1 now third is a strip cropping versus a strip intercropping a strip cropping refers growing soil conserving and soil depleting crops in alternate strips running perpendicular to the slope of the land or to the direction of prevailing winds for the purpose of reducing erosion while in case of strip intercropping growing two or more crops simultaneously in different strips wide enough to permit independent cultivation but narrow enough for the crops to interact agronomically now we will study about divisions of intercropping intercropping may be divided into the four groups like first one is parallel cropping under this cropping two crops are selected which have different growth habits and have a zero competition between each other and both of them express their full yield potential like growing green gram or black gram with maize and growing green gram or soybean with cotton and second is companion cropping in companion cropping the yield of one crop is not affected by other crop in other word the yield of both the crops is equal to their pure crops that the standard plant population of both crops is maintained like growing mustard wheat potato etc with sugarcane crop and growing wheat radish cabbage sugar beet with potato crop now third division is multi-storage cropping 
or multi tier cropping growing plants of different height in the same field at the same time is termed as multi storied cropping it is mostly practiced in orchards and plantation crops for maximum use of solar energy even under high planting density like growing eucalyptus with papaya and bursin and sometimes it is practiced under field crops such as sugarcane plus potato plus onion and sugarcane plus mustard and potato or growing coconut with pineapple and turmeric or ginger and fourth is synergistic cropping in this type of cropping yield of both the crops are higher than the pure crops in unit area like growing sugarcane and potato combination now to study the mechanism of yield advantage in intercropping the most important index of biological advantage is the relative yield total ryt introduced by david or land one denberg in 1965 or land equivalent ratio by wille in 1979 first mechanism the mixture yield of a component crop expressed as a portion of its yield as a sole crop from the same replacement series is the relative yield of the crop and sum of relative yields of component crop is called relative yield total second the total land area required under sole cropping to give the same yields obtained in the intercropping is called land equivalent ratio ler both the expressions ryt and ler are similar so this presentation was all about intercropping now my presentation ends here thank you very much I have given you my YouTube channel details. Journey with Vijay Kumar Srivastava. Having request, please visit the channel, subscribe it, and provide your kind and valuable feedback for further improvements in next coming presentations. Thank you.